go back over there to the book of Romans. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Verse 14, the eighth chapter. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they're the sons of God. For we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but we have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. We, 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 didn't, we haven't received the spirit of fear. We received the, the, the spirit of power and love and a sound mind. Amen. Where we cry, I've got a father. Amen. I have a father. Amen. Oh, I have a father. And he's big, and he's big, and he's big, and he's rich, 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 rich. He owns the universe, and I'm a joint heir. Now the devil goes to pushing you. Just get up out of the bed and just go to hollering out loud like that. He won't be around 30 seconds. I have a father, and he's God. Verse 17, if children, then heirs, heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. Oh, well, you see, Brother Cooper, now we have to suffer. Spare me nothing that you bore for me on the cross if it'll help me get closer to you. Bull. <laughs> what is our suffering? The suffering that we have is to resist and obey. Obey and resist. Everything he bore for me on the cross, we resist. And everything he received for me on the cross, we receive it. And when he says, do, do it, glory to God. Amen. If it rips open Bear Creek, yes. do it. Amen. Well, what if I die? Well, so what? <laughs> you wouldn't be the first one. Amen. <laughs> Dying ain't nothing. That's the easiest thing you ever did. Dying is easy. It's living. <laughs> that ain't all that easy. <laughs> Amen. Now, joint heirs, for I reckon the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Now, <laughs> look at verse, um, well, there's a lot I'd like to read in it, but look at 28th verse. We know that all things work together for good to them that love God. There it is again, prepared for those that love him. Work together for them that love God to them that are called according to his purpose. Well, you know, Brother Copeland, it's like the Bible said. <laughs> Everything is for a purpose. That's right. All things work together for good. Referring mostly to what the devil's doing. No, no, no. All things don't work together for good. For most people, they work together to destroy people. That works together for the good of those that love God and called according to His purpose. That's a specific group of people. I just finished uh, last year uh, a meeting in um, South Carolina, Columbia, and uh, with uh, Chaplain uh, A.L. Downing, and uh, <laughs> finished at the, the noon meeting was the last meeting, and I'd, been, I'd preached on Jesus only said what he heard his father say and, and so forth. And I left there, and they, they had the car waiting for me there. 
And um, I went out and got in the car, and, and Mike Leeper, uh, my um, head of security and, and driver, he said, um, they can't get the door open on the airplane. And so I said, well, give me a phone. He said, well, I thought we'd just probably go to the hotel. I said, come on, Mike, get me to the airport. I'm going to put my hands on that door. Come on, get me out there. So I picked up the phone and I called Dwayne, our, our chief pilot, and I said, what's going on out there? And he told me, he said, uh, boss, I, I don't know. He said, that door, he said, you, he said, you, you can turn that handle. And he said, it won't open far enough to even get your fingernails in there. You, can, you can't get and he said, it is stuck. I said, well, did you, did you call the factory? And they got a 24-hour uh, Team 10 there, they call it, at Cessna. And he said, yeah, I'll call it. He said, they can, they can get it open. What they need to do is drill a hole. Going to, I said, no, 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 no. <laughs> I said, I'm on my way out there. He said, okay. So I'm... Now, and now, I, this is scripture I just read you. I never had used this scripture just this way. But you have to remember, <laughs> one scripture, one scripture can last a thousand years mm. and never get the same mm. revelation out of it twice. Mm. Wow. Mm. Mm. It's God's Word. Mm. Last, just this last mm. summer, Believers uh, Convention there in Southwest Believers Convention 4, the Lord impressed me and said, I want you to preach on that what I said when I said, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And every word just exploded in me. Every word. And I thought, we have the spiritual capacity to hear every word that God says. And it staggered me. And I said, whoa, sir. Oh my. And this booming, the one I really like, <laughs> the booming word of the Lord came as I was praying over it out there on, on, on my, in my, my prayer deck outside there behind the house. And he said, Kenneth, I am God. <laughs> and, I, you know, I, and I thought, yeah. <laughs> and he said, I am God. He said, I could begin speaking to you a word every second, one after the other throughout eternity and never say the same word twice. Amen. Man, it's just going to blew me up on the inside. I thought, yeah. And he said, and you have the capacity to hear every word I say throughout eternity. And I shouted, glory to God, I'm only one word behind God. Folks, that's who we are. We're in the very likeness of Jesus. It's time we allowed him to stretch us and grow up on the inside. Amen. Well, I, I, we're driving along in the car, and I uh, remember I said, I, I never used this verse just like this before. And I said, Father, I'm inquiring of you of words to speak concerning that door. He said, you remember, now I'm talking about right in here. I didn't hear audible things, but I very, very well heard the Word of God inside me. You can do the same thing, but you have to turn these off. He said, he that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Everybody out there had paddles. <laughs> you have to turn inward. And you have to practice it. You get better at it. Somebody calls you on the phone you never heard before. You don't know who they are. But somebody you listen to all the time, you recognize. Some of them, sometimes you know who it is before you pick up the phone. That's because you're a spiritual being. 
And he said, you remember in my word where I said all things work together for the good of them that love God called according to my purpose? I said, yes, sir. When he said that, the moment he said it, <laughs> all things, a door is a thing. I thought, you know, I'd always considered that to be an incident or some things. Yeah. Well, I'm trained on that airplane. I know what the inside that door looks like. And I, I could just see all the little, all of the, the handles and levers and the gears and all the stuff that's got to go come together to open that door. And, I, and in, in, my, in my mind's eye, I just saw all that working together at the same time. He said, say this. I heard it. Door, and I said it out loud when he said it. I didn't say it all that loud. I think Mike heard me. He's driving. I'm just letting my head back on that seat. I said, door, open. I heard that. Now, all things. Door, I, I'm, I'm following God. He said a word, I said a word. Door, you are a thing. Work together for the good of those that love God. That would be me. Call according to his purpose. That also would be me. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Blink. Mike's phone rang. He said, Here is Dwayne. <laughs> Just that quick. He said, um, I, When you said you were coming out here, he said, I got in the car to drive back up to the fuel desk because the airplane was parked pretty good ways out there on the apron. And he said, and I, he said, I just had, the, he said, I had the thought, you know, I'm going to try that door one more time. He said, I got out and he said, that thing just opened like nothing wrong with it. He said, come on out, we're going home. All right. Now you'll notice when you're not believing it all that much, you want to keep on talking. Door, now you listen to me. You're a thing. And all things, you have to bow your knee to the name of Jesus for all, his name is above every name that is named, both in heaven and in earth. And in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, like the fig tree of old, you have to listen to what I'm saying to you because I have authority over you in the name of Jesus. And just blah, 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 blah. You know what those are? Vain words. And you have to stand judgment for every vain word that proceeds out of your mouth. In operative words that you did not get from God, even though they may be Scripture. But Jesus didn't just go around quoting Scripture. He said, I only say what I hear my father say. And didn't say anything until he did say something. And if God doesn't say anything, what good is it going to do you? <laughs> That's when you need to be still and know that He is God. Spend some time with Him. You're born of His Spirit. You serious kinfolks. <laughs> serious kinfolk. We family, brother. Praise God. Amen. We're a family of God. Amen. For real. Amen. This is not some little religious club. That's right. We Amen. are the born family of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Stand and give the Lord praise and thanksgiving. It is by faith which works by love. <clears throat> now this is my this is my closing scripture. Listen to this now. 
for those who love God, called according to his purpose. Didn't he say that? Now, you notice it, it talks about prepared for those that love him. Now, the question comes along, then who is it that loves him? John 14, 21, Jesus made it very, very clear. He that has my commands. Now, that, that's not the Ten Commandments. That's what he, he tells you to do. He that has my directions and keepeth them, he it is that loves me. Well, I love God, and He don't ever manifest Himself to me. No, you don't. Yes, I do. No, you don't. Brother Copeland said I didn't love God. No, I didn't say you didn't love God. Jesus said you didn't love Him. <laughs> Amen. He that has my commandments, my directions. That means somebody is paying attention. Somebody has put his direction first place. They didn't wait. These people are not waiting until they, they get in a jam and then start screaming and hollering out to God, why don't you do something? How'd you let this come on me? I don't understand. It always happens to me. Every time we start to take a vacation, the kids get sick, and I guess I'm going to get laid off. Dear God, why does it always happen to me? You know, I love you, Lord. Really? <laughs> and and you... you, you you're not lying about it. You do. But the love of God not working in you. And he loves you. But he's not in a place where he can consistently manifest himself to you. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loves me. Now those are the ones that all things are working for the good. And when they get out of line, those are the people that come to him and inquire of the words. You speak them, it's the Father that dwells within. He does the work, and you keep carrying out the plan of God. The problem, the big problem, is making your own plans and then trying to get him to bless them. When you get on his plan, it's already blessed. So, he that, he that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loves me. I will love him, my Father will love him, and I will manifest myself to him. Now, folks, that's worth spending some time to get. Manifestation of Jesus is manifested love. Living a life in manifested love Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. When you hit the bed at night and the whole world and all its hell just caved in on you and you just flop down there in that bed and you, and, and you think, oh, Lord, I want to thank you. I want to thank you. I'm seeking your plan, sir. I, I got out of line there somewhere today, but I'm entering in your rest tonight. I see in the 127th Psalm where uh, <laughs> you give your beloved sleep. And I'm your beloved. I receive sweet sleep. That's what you called it in Proverbs. You called it sweet sleep. I receive my sweet sleep tonight. And when I wake up in the morning, I'm going to hear your voice and I'm going to know exactly what to do and I'm going to read my chapter in the morning and you and I are going to have a fun day tomorrow. And we're going to walk in your compassion and we're going to heal the sick. Woo! We might get a chance to raise the dead. Who knows? Yeah. Glory to God. Oh, yeah. You don't feel like doing that. You feel like just pulling your hair out or something. No, no, no. No. You don't react like that in the presence of the one that loved you and gave himself. And he's right there. He's right there. Amen. 
No, you ain't waiting on him. He's been waiting on you all day. While you were fussing around out there, he said, would you please come here? I'll tell you what to do with it. Just shut your mouth and come here. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Life in the faith lane is full of life, full of glory. Oh, yeah. Got a lot of bad stuff in it. Somehow, you just don't notice that much anymore. Too busy with the good stuff. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Anyone in here, in fact, everyone in the building, lift your hand toward God. Pray this with me, O oh, Father in heaven. In the name of Jesus. I believe with all my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I, receive I receive you tonight. In your fullness and in your wonders. In your and in your wonders. I, repent of sin. I repent of sin. I renounce it. I renounce, it. I renounce the devil and everything he stands for. Fill me now with your precious Holy Spirit. Fill me now with your precious Holy Spirit. To overflowing. To overflowing. I receive my supernatural prayer language. I receive my supernatural, I receive my supernatural praise language. I receive my supernatural praise. It's in me right now. It's in me right now. Because you're in me right now, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Now, all of you that prayed that, that had never prayed it before, you just accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Oh, Brother Copeland. Brother Copeland, could it be that easy? Easiest thing you ever did in your life? Jesus did all the hard part. You couldn't earn this if you, if you wanted to. You ain't qualified, but you're qualified to receive it. He did everything but pray your prayer for you. Now every head bowed. Father, I pray for every person that just prayed that for the very first time. Reveal yourself, sir. Reveal yourself through them, in them, for them, around them, and over them and under them. Show yourself big on the inside. Satan, take your hands off of God's property right now. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Say it out loud. Thank God for Jesus. I receive my place. I'm a joint heir. Lift me up, sir. Lift my understanding into that place where I sit in the heavenlies, in you, and you in me. Fill my understanding. Flood my spirit with light of what you worked for me when you went to the cross. Oh, I'm a believer. I'm not a doubter. I'm a believer. I am not a doubter. I am prosperous. My will is God's will. His will is my will. He and I are one together. He's revealing his plan to me. Father, I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. And I am yours to command, sir. 
I receive my orders. I'm ready to go. I'm ready, willing, and able. Thoroughly supplied. Full of grace. All sufficiency. I'm a believer. I'm not a doubter. I am a child of the living God. Amen. 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 Woo, glory be to God. For the spirit which you have now received is not a spirit of slavery, but you have received the spirit of adoption, the spirit producing sonship, in which we cry, Abba, Father. Daddy, some people might think that we shouldn't be talking in such familiar terms about God, but they'd be wrong. It's scriptural to talk that way about Him. In the New Testament, there's a Greek word for Father, Abba. The most accurate English translation for that is Daddy. It signifies closeness. It speaks of a relationship that's been developed through time spent together. Once you fellowship with Him enough to get to know Him, you want to be close to Him all the time. Love is not a feeling. It is the force of God's inner nature and power. God imparted that power into you when you were born again. He put the very essence of His strength inside of you. You are made free from addiction, anxiety, anger, and fear by giving love the right of way in your words, behavior, and beliefs. In their free Father's Day gift, Yield to Love, Kenneth and Gloria Copeland explain what God's love actually is and why love should take the lead in your life and your family. In this two CD series, discover how to use the nature of God inside of you. Be made strong and strengthen the people around you by yielding to love. Kenneth and Gloria Copeland have a gift for you, a two CD series, Yield to Love. Learn how to apply God's love in your life. Request yours at kcm.org or call us at 800-600-7395. Kenneth Copeland Ministries is here for you. The Believer's Voice of Victory is available on DVD or CD at kcm.org. You can also view the webcasts online at your convenience or download them as video or audio files. Kenneth and Gloria Copeland have a gift for you, a two CD series, Yield to Love. Learn how to apply God's love in your life. Request yours at kcm.org or call us at 800-600-7395.